Hey everybody, so we hit the 500 subscriber uh, subscriber count, which is awesome. Thank you everybody for following along with my squirrel moments. Whether it's from chainsaws, ATV, um, whatnot. ATV is hasn't been a thing for well over a year, so any of the content you see is is previous content. Um, we got rid of that just simply for the fact of um, it was the mileage and stuff like that so it wasn't terribly high but I also didn't want really high the repair bills and well the machine didn't really cost me next to nothing I'm not going to get into that one but I'm sure some people are probably wondering how did an X3 Maverick barely cost anything but in short it was a raffle one in a raffle, but anyways, besides that, that was an awesome machine. I miss that thing, but I also don't miss the fact of the potential of some of the really expensive future repairs that would come along with owning that machine. But since we broke the 500 count, like I say, that's a, a, that's a solid milestone, you know. <clears throat> So, like, moving forward, once we get to a 1,000, I'll do some sort of a subscriber giveaway. Don't know yet what it will be. So, but that'll be when that time comes. Uh, I just want to say thank you for everybody that's been following along with my randomness and random moments and whatnot, whether it be on video or in person. Um, for the future of the channel, we picked up something. If you haven't seen the community, post we picked up uh, a 9 by 48 lathe it's a south bend it's an old school one it's in really good shape uh, the guy was the second owner of it his dad owned it prior to him I believe his dad it sounded like his dad owned it since new so we got a really good deal on it came with tooling and whatnot and there's gonna be some upgrades happening to make it more soft friendly that being said is this opens up a completely whole new realm compared to doing it the previous way if I was doing it in the cylinders or on the pistons uh, if I do it by hand or making up jigs to use what tools I have available so like I say this is, a, this is going to be a complete game changer which is awesome um, also I haven't really posted much about it because I didn't really uh, record much of it. But, uh, so like the other weekend there, um, me and Evan from Northwest Saw Shop in Ontario, we uh, got together and <coughs> set out for a little adventure and we picked up a bunch of chains. So uh, in the process, this month has been super busy. Like there's the truckload of chain. Some of it will be going for sale. Some of it has been, like I'm keeping uh, for personal stuff and whatnot. Um, and also some of the other stuff in there is extremely rare. And some people in the community have been looking for uh, that specific size of chain. So that being said, it's basically for the most part spoken for to who it's going to already and whatnot. Uh, so there was that, uh, finally got a chain spinner, so now we're gonna, or I, me, the channel, however you want to put it, be making up some chain, uh, what else, there's a lot that's gone on this month, and a lot of sporadic stuff, uh, started working on putting together, at least the, the first steps of building a trailer, I don't know if I'm going to do a 16 or 18 foot yet. And also it's going to double down as a log hauler. So I'm going to have to build an arch for it and stuff. Which I have the steel and I hope it's robust enough. Uh, it's what is it? Three by four uh, quarter inch wall. Uh, there are four or five foot sections. I can't remember in length. So based off of just like a random number and visualizing this in my mind, I'm assuming this is going to be roughly about seven feet tall, the arch. 
So I'm just hoping it's going to be big enough because I've seen other other guys building them where they're using like 4x4 four four or 3x3 three three square tube. So I'm going with the rectangular just because what, what I have. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be an interesting adventure. I just got the spring, the, uh, spring purchase welded on last night. I'm using dual 3,500 pound five pole axles. I can't remember what the wheel surface is, like wheel mount to wheel mount. Uh, I think it's like 90 something inches, 92 inches or something. So it's going to be wide. Um, why I re welded arches on is because the original ones are a spring over design. And I want to do a spring under to bring the deck down as much as I as much as I can. I don't know this that might bite, bite me in the butt, but we will see. And if worst case is I got the I got the original bracket still on there, and the absolute worst case is you just unbolt it, lift it up, slide, flip the axle over, slide it back in, and you gain I think it's like a two and a half inch uh, thick axle. Axle to be two and a half inch, two and three quarter. So I'll gain that in height if if I find it's too low. So, yeah, like I say, so that's, uh, I like, my summers are busy, that's why there hasn't been much content. Like, it's, the fall and winter is where I find, like, I have more time available to do things with having a family, being married, and having a daughter and stuff. Like, our summers are pretty, pretty hectic on a, on a good year, let alone a average year or a really busy year, so, so yeah, I'm just finally starting to find a little bit of time to start dipping into projects I haven't had time for, there's other saws I, that are also in queue to do, that I have to get done, um, but again, it's, it's a time thing, when you get older, you don't have as much time as you did when you were younger, that's for darn sure, so, uh, yeah, so that's what's going on for projects, kind of where we're at currently, and why some things have been, like, slow, delayed on videos. That's why there's a lot more shorts of, like, little things I've been doing, because I haven't had time to, you know, go and record uh, full video segments, whatnot. Um, also, I have a, have a drone, had a drone. Uh, I thought it was a submarine a few weeks ago, so I kind of went for a little bit of a dip. Never found it. There was four of us looking, and we never, ever did find it. So, luckily, that uh, I have warranty and coverage and stuff, and you know, like the so there's data logs and all that stuff. So I had to submit the data logs, and it gets analyzed and checked out from at DJI and da 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 da. To, uh, to verify it's not a false claim or, you know, or a false, uh, false statements, whatever. So anyway, so it's like, it shows like it flew out and then just disappeared. Luckily, they have like a little black box kind of idea, I guess, like it data logs everything, right? So, so that's another thing I got to tend to yet later this month is getting that all sorted out. There's a fee I have to pay to uh, to replace it, but it is a lot cheaper than having to uh, pay for a replacement drone. So, if anybody goes and buys a DJI brand new, get the the uh, care, uh, DJI Care or whatever they call it, their 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 warranty package. Really suggest it. Uh, I got the two-year plan. That being said, yeah, the one year is cheaper, but with the two-year, you get some additional benefits and whatnot. And they just recently changed the layout of uh, of, of, of your coverages, and they actually improved it quite a bit, like to be beneficial for the uh, for the owner, which I thought was really awesome. So, my take on DJI, at least their drones. They are on point. They're they're great. That little Mini Three Pro has been great. Like it, it handles say winds better than it's actually rated for, which I thought was huge. Because my DJI Mini Two or the One, I can't. I think I, I think I had the Two 
was prior to this one. And it had a lower wind resistant grading, but it struggled when you got up into the upper the upper end of that threshold. Where with uh, with the three, it's it's stout. It's definitely an underrated drone for as far as wind ratings go. Uh, but yeah, back so on the topic of that lathe though. It's going to be a bit before I get set up. Like I said, I got I got too much other knickknack stuff going on this summer to uh, to get it set up because I got to make space for it. Then I got to make a bench because I didn't I didn't grab the bench when that came with it. Just bulky. Uh, if you ever ran a South Bend, uh, those over South those like this hobby size South Bends, uh, there's different models and that one that I have there's an A, B, and C, I think mine's a C, and the motor is actually, re like, it's offset on the back, so it actually takes up a ton of space, and, uh, so I gotta figure out where, like, how I'm gonna go about, uh, setting it up, and actually I don't have a lot of space to start with, also, I am entertaining the thought of dropping the 110 motor, AC motor, and put a 110 Volt, I guess, I guess like a 110 to 12 volt or whatever, but DC motor in there instead. And then this way, instead of having to change gears all the time um, for certain for certain things that I can uh, control the speed just from a pedometer or a controller. So that's uh, that's the thought train. There's going to be some modifying little little things to do. I believe, like from what I can tell, unless I can get away with mounting, reusing, or finding another V pulley uh, of the same size or as close as possible to what's on that motor, then I can reuse that. And then just, uh, I got the brackets I cut off, off the treadmill, so I can reutilize those to put, to mount that motor. So, yeah, I also, I'm, uh, I gotta do some more research, but it's old enough. It has the old spliced on leather belt. I think it's like one inch wide or something. So I'm going to uh, do some digging and maybe convert that to serpentine while it's already all apart. Uh, yeah, the thing's actually in immaculate shape. I don't know the year. Um, the only solid way to find out is to send my information off on it to South Bend themselves, or I guess Grizzly is the parent company now, to get, like, apparently they inventory uh, all their lays that ever been sold, like, going way back when. These things apparently been made since, like, the 1920s, I believe. I saw some dates on some serial numbers all the way up into the 60s, so I don't know where, where in, where in history this falls. So... But all in all, it's in really, like I say, it's in really good shape. Everything's tight. This spindle was rebuilt about 10 years ago, roughly. So that's, uh, so that's a big plus. A little less, uh, a little less for me to have to worry about. I mean, that spindle should last me probably pretty close to my lifetime. So, uh, some upgrades. I've got to do some research into a four-jaw chuck. Um, I saw there was a face plate, a slotted four and a six version, old, like old school OEM that were, I've, I've seen for sale on eBay. So I might be able to use those for doing cylinders, but I'm, I'll have to pick one up and then just eye, eyeball fit a cylinder on there just to make sure all the bolt holes line up. So if that's, if it does great, uh, four jaw chuck is definitely going to be in the books. Like say, um, uh, quick post or quick tool post is another one uh yeah no it's uh for an old lathe it's it's it, everything's tight on it all in all um the the, the, uh, the chuck it's got a little bit a little bit of in and out but if i recall i think it was a collar to, to adjust the backlash on that to pull that out but it's very minimal but like when you take it go forward backwards up down there is zero play in it um, the cross slide has zero play in it. When you lock the cross slide and go turn the handle, it's like a little here and a little there, and that's it. There's no like half turn, quarter turn, or nothing. It just 
locks, locks, locks. So, yeah. So, and the other thing is, is I'm looking also at, and probably one of the for maybe one of the first things, the first couple of things, I want to put a DRO on it, digital readout, and it kind of takes a little bit, kind of simplifies the operation of once you're cutting, which is nice. And when you look at the cheap kits, like Amazon, eBay, they seem to have good reviews, and uh, that's my big thing is the fact that they got good reviews and they're affordable. Yeah, they're not like some high-end, multi-thousand-dollar uh, system, but for somebody like me that is just going, to, you know, using it at home and whatnot, it should it should work out good, I think. But anyways, so that's what the updates are. Uh, currently, like I said, it's been hectic, so I haven't had much time to do much. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys on the next one. Actually, no, we'll probably talk to you guys when I'm when I'm building that trailer. That I am probably going to be uh, recording as as I go through and whatnot. And talk about things that, uh, about that trailer that in theory might make sense to me. But hey, if there's other input, if, you, if there's other input before I actually do it, then uh, I've got to take things into consideration. So anyways, now we'll catch you guys later. Have a good day.